Hi, and welcome to the Misguided Salon series. I am your host, Paul Goslin, creator of Misguided. And today, this is my conversation with Katie Jacoby. Katie played Gracie, a writer from The Bold and the Beautiful, in season one, episode three. Today, we talk about Katie's love of all my children, her new business endeavor, J&O Creatives, and we both attempt to figure out the definition for success as an artist. Enjoy. I'm gonna be really, really honest with you right now, okay? Okay. Soap stars have a certain level of attractiveness to them. I mean, they're at least like five eight, and they have like muscles and stuff. Like, do you have a six pack? No. Okay, that's what I thought. I mean, because just the look right here is not. I mean, I write for the bold and the beautiful, not for the bald and the boring. Huh. I'm, I'm sure you're really nice, but yeah. So really good luck, okay, on that plan B that I hope you have. I hope you have it, okay? Do you have it? A plan B? Okay. Really good luck on that, okay? And, and yeah, you work on that. You work on that. Katie Jacoby! Hello. Hi, I'm so, so happy to see you. It's been far too long. Way too long. I know. I think the last time I saw you, I was trying to think. I was like, I think I was babysitting for your kids. <laughs> I was literally, I was like, when's the last time? And then I was like, oh, he babysat for me. <laughs> yeah. He's like the best <laughs> man in the world. Well, we'll see. But maybe, maybe that's a title I'll, I'll own. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's just been forever. Um, so I'd love to start the way I've sort of been starting all of these is kind of talk about our origin story, how we met, and how did you become a part of Misguided? Oh, good. Okay. Well, how did we meet? Um, well, we initially met at a, a theater company that we were both in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. All right. We were both in a theater company together. I met you, of course. Love you. I mean, how can you not? <laughs> um, and I think just how long ago was that, by the way? Um, I, I think I was I, uh, 2012, maybe. I was fairly new to L.A. Um, yeah, but you look exactly the same. Thanks. I mean, for reals. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it must have been because it was, I feel like, a very long time ago. Yeah, it was like early on, I was looking for um, some sort of community uh, of actors and, and creative people. And uh, it was actually this photographer that I knew said, hey, you should join um, this theater company. And I was like, OK. So I had just finished a play. Um, and you guys needed like uh, scenes or monologues for the audition. And I was like, great, I have the scene that I literally just did like so many nights in a row. Um, so it was like spot on, perfect timing. Yeah. Um, so that's where I met you and fell in love with you. And then um, I also, I, I'm, I'm just, I just have to say, bring it up because it's like one of my biggest memories of you is this, um, I already forgot it. Uh, the piece that you did of your diaries. Mortif mortified. Mortified. <laughs> yes. And I became like obsessed with this like mortified um, show that you were doing. Like brought all my friends. Um, like literally. You were, you were a groupie. I, it was it was wonderful. I sat with your I sat in a booth like with your family at one point. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was like at all of them. I was such a fan. I just also think that that's a brilliant idea and I love it. And it made me go home and read all my diaries and it was great. Um, so yeah, and then um, and then through that, I think you started this awesome uh, web series and then asked me to be 
in it and be this writer and uh, <laughs> not so nice. And I was like, yes, thank you. And so there we are. Yeah, I loved it because I thought, obviously, you loved Mortified. And I think because it, the situation was based on a real life experience that I had doing a Mortified performance, I was in Portland uh, when I did it and I had invited an actual writer from The Bold and the Beautiful. And I had found him on Twitter randomly and I was like, hey, do you want to come to this uh, showcase thing? And he did. He came and he loved it. Like he w was like, this is amazing. I think he came on Valentine's Day. It was like him and his wife came. I was like, what a nice night out. And he had never heard of it. So he was like really excited about it, I think. Yeah, and your segments were just like my favorite. And I'm not just saying that, but I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, I loved your segments in your segment. It was just uh, what you wrote in your diary was so oh, great. Thank you. Well, if anyone wants to hear a portion of it, you can uh, check out my website. I just redid it and it's in the podcast section. So there you go. I literally just did that today. I like, spent, all day. <laughs> spent all day doing... Uh, my website. Yeah. Yay, good for you. That's tough work. I know it's, that. It's a lot. It's a lot. So yeah, I liked um, this writer character. I think uh, first season was very different than what the show has become. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, but I sort of had this big idea. And your character brought the first bit of drama, I guess you could say. It was the first time Paul like hit this this challenge and it was it was a harsh harsh bit of critique I, I would say um that line is ingrained in my bald head as uh i write for the bold and the beautiful and not the bald and the boring i said that was very hard to say to you but <laughs> um thank you is there is there a piece of critique or criticism feedback that you've received that sort of made you go aha and like sort of change for the better or I don't know, grow in like a bigger way, I guess. Like as an actor, I feel like I've had so many of those moments. I think as you shift mm -hmm. into different um, pockets of your career, obviously as you get older, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I have had so many of those moments. Um, I think I think what was like one of the biggest eye-opening moments for me uh, in acting was um, really in the in the stage that I am, right? I'm not like a, a A list or B list or even C list actor, right? I work, but of course not as much as I want. And you know, but I I have a great I like my resume, right? Yes. So I'm like. But I think what I learned and what was a big eye-opening thing for me was to really like owning my type or what I'm good at. Um, <clears throat> and once I kind of figured that out, even though I kind of already knew, but I was like, oh yeah, I'll go in for, you know, or yes, whatever, I would Stepford wife or whatever, right? Um, but once I realized what I was good at and what my type is, the energy that I bring into the room when I walk in, um, I just have more fun with it and um, it's just my energy. I don't have to do that much, right? So once I figured that out and also was able to have a conversation with my manager and stuff like that, then we're on the same page. I think that really kind of steered me in a good direction for where I'm at right now and in this age that I'm in. This <laughs> age, <Yeah. laughs> right? when, you're, when you're 20, it's like, it's a different ball game. Right than where where I am right now, so it's that I think was a big eye opening thing for me and something that I learned and that I was just like, oh yeah, I'm fine with that. Let's go, let's roll with that type. <laughs> like, you know, I think that that's huge, like especially for actors to like really own the type that you are and feel comfortable in it. Um, I think I. It has been a long process. Uh, when I went to the conservatory I was at, they always kept giving me all of these gay scenes. Um, and I and I mean that as like I was playing the gay character, not like whatever. Um, but I wasn't out then. 
but I obviously everybody just assumed or whatever and you know life happens and but but I kept getting them and I was like what is happening why 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 and then like once I came out and once I sort of owned who I was like the performances started shifting like I just it and it was more enjoyable too yeah it's more fun also because it's just like you can play and it's just like in you and you can you have more fun to play with it right yeah. it's like um yeah I I just I am such a and also I've spent some time like not a lot but sometimes on the other side of the table um and just to see when you have a character that the people that walk into the room that kind of just are that energy right away and then the people who are really good actors that walk into the room and they can act it they're good right but the person with the, that just is that person right it's just you're like oh yeah that's that's it that's what we want right so it's like yeah it's kind of a thing it's it's kind of a, a fun thing to find to find right to keep yeah. finding I guess. yeah because yeah. you keep growing you keep growing as a person new life experiences etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, quickly about Misguided for just a second. Did you have a favorite? I know you were just in the first season and I would love to have you back and we could talk about that in a little bit. Um, but did you have, have you watched a little bit more of it? Have you, have you had a favorite scene? Um, in yeah, the well, I have to say, I really did watch more of the earlier season, the earlier, uh, mis, uh, Misguided seasons, but I do, um, one of our also mutual friends, Yvette, who I love. Um, there is one scene that I remember, uh, and, um, it just kind of really, I, I don't know why, when, when I, when I was like, oh, if he asked me, I, I just remembered, I was thinking and I was like, well, I remember Yvette in this beautiful wedding gown and she's crying and it was such a beautiful performance too, um, that I, you know, I really did love that wedding scene. I think it was a little, was that when you were getting married too? Yeah, I, so I was getting married. She came and she shot my fiance. What oh, happened? to marry somebody other than me, did you? I have loved you from the very first moment I met you, Polly. No one can make you as happy as I can. No one. I'm sorry, Polly. I had no choice. <laughs> she had a gun yeah that's right. <laughs> yes, yes 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 okay I mean, it's all coming back now yes it yeah. was it's it's such this I, I talked about this with a vet when we did when we did this uh salon series with her that it's such a soap opera moment to have like the bride with the gun tears and like if we could have been outside in the rain like it just like that level of melodrama is like pure soap opera yeah it was kind of perfect like real life intertwined into soaps no soap <laughs> opera world i love it yeah that's great uh speaking of soaps you on your resume have been blessed to have worked on uh almost all of the la daytime dramas correct <laughs> yeah i don't i kind of ran the gamut of the soap opera daytime dramas yeah, yeah. you were a nurse on gh and, and young and the restless yes. um did you have a relationship to soaps prior to those experiences Gosh, I love this question, by the way. Okay, yes, I do have a relationship to soaps and the soap is all my children, which is also what I love about uh, the Susan Lucci and the star. <laughs> um, but um, one of my best childhood memories growing up is my mom was a flight attendant, right? When I grew up. And so back in that, those days, uh, you would VCR tape all your stories mm -hmm. um, and hers was all my children, nothing else, just all my children. And 
So she would have like seven days of all my children taped on a VCR mm -hmm. and we would lay in her bed and we would watch all my children. And so one of the best memories growing up with my mom is watching all my children. And so I was like a little bit devastated when it ended. I mean, I was, you know, I watched it when that whole thing happened with Dixie and Tad and Dixie, or was it Tad or Dixie? Dixie, I think, disappeared and then she sh came back like years later yeah. and yeah. had like amnesia. And I was like, you know, oh, I just, I, I mean, yeah, I watched it back in the day when Kelly Ripa was on it. And yeah, I just, I read those were the days that I remember. So did you hear, did you, have you seen that there is the potential pilot for Pine Valley? Have you heard, no. have you heard any of this? So no, there, ABC bought a script uh, that's called Pine, it's potentially called Pine Valley. Um, it's being produced, I guess, by Kelly and Mark's uh, production company. And it's gonna be an, almost an All My Children reboot for primetime. Yeah. Well, that will be amazing. I'll send you, I'll send you the, the it, it was on deadline a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. Send <laughs> Especially, I was like, uh, can I audition for this? How do we get involved? <laughs> yeah. 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 It was like, they did like a web series or something for a moment, didn't they? Or something so like they that? switched after the ABC uh, canceled it. They, a production company bought it and, and put it online for, I don't even think it lasted a full year. Um, but then they, it was both All My Children and One Life to Live. And I think it, if it was now, it would be a completely different story, but I think it was just right before everything started streaming. Right. And so the timing just wasn't, wasn't there. Um, but if they tried it today, I'm sure like it probably would work, but. Oh yeah. You know, sure. I yeah. mean, it's all, it is a money thing. Like, you know, it's budgets and, and whatnot, but that's a whole other ball game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so let's, uh, switch tracks for a second because I would love to talk about uh, J and O Creatives because yeah of course because I I don't know if you knew about this about me in high school I was uh, an assistant teacher in children's theater classes and that's how I paid for my theater classes because my high school didn't have it so I found a theater company I essentially volunteered to be their assistant teacher in the children's classes and then I got the teen theater classes for free. So like this has like a very special place in my heart. And so I was wondering if you could just talk about it. How did the idea come about? What type of programs you offer? Um, oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. Well, um, let's see. It's I'm, it's still fairly new. Probably, I would say like five years, I guess. <clears throat> um, I mean, that's a good amount of time. <laughs> you're right, you're right, yeah. Um, you know, it really kind of started when I had kids. Uh, beautiful their imaginations were. Um, and how creative they were, um, and how I, it just fascinated me to watch. Um, I also, before I had kids, uh, I teach at the Orange County School of the Arts in Orange mm -hmm. County. It's also my alma mater, um, and uh, I teach there. And it gave me so much joy. I only taught one. I only teach one day a week there, but um, I it, it literally filled me up. It filled me up. I still audition and acting is like, oh my, I want it so bad. But like, you know, this, this, it really filled me up. I, there was a hole, right? Um, and it filled, it filled it. So then um, I, one of my best friends growing up, uh, who also went to this high school with me, Matthew Morrison, who was in Glee and a bunch of Broadway shows. Um, <clears throat> he said, do a summer thing, intensive or something, and I'll do a master class. And I was like, okay. And so we <laughs> put I put together this summer intensive um, that I taught with my my dear friend Kelly Dorney, um, and he came in and did a master class, and it was so great. We had so much fun, and from that, honestly, I was just like, it just kept building and building. So basically, uh, I'm also arts education is really important to me. Um, I feel like it's <laughs> I feel like I could have gone in a thousand different directions um, and probably not so good ones. And arts education really kept me focused. It kept mm -hmm. me driven. Um, I, 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 I had, um, you know, my, I was focused. Um, and so it, it really helped me through a lot of hard times in my life growing up. And 
I was very passionate about that. And so when I saw that this was happening to to the other kids like I would meet kids and they would be so um you know kind of introverted and shy and then all of a sudden they would like sing and 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 their whole like everything opened up and I was like oh my gosh this is the arts this is this is amazing like it gave me goosebumps it still does so I was like we that just was so inspiring to me and one um I so then I just built it I just built it and I and I created it um we have musical theater classes we have ongoing classes all virtual right now obviously um for the time being I have two acting classes for littles like six years old to 10 and then 11 to 15 two acting classes I have screenwriting classes um we do summer intensive we do all the master classes we've had mean girls hamilton master classes we've had all those master classes come in um and it it's honestly just been so fulfilling and so great um i've really uh it's just been super inspiring to do so and i just i can't wait to see it grow and build and do yeah. all the I love and we don't I do give scholarships out um I try to give uh scholarships out to uh mainly BIPOC students in the area um and yeah we're just you know uh, there's no you don't have to be anything you don't have to be a Broadway star to be in our classes you can it's you just have to have the passion that's awesome yeah so it's it's fun Nice. I love it. And I actually, I remember when it started, I remember seeing you post about that summer um, intensive and then I saw it start to grow. And then I was like, this is amazing. This is like a role that I, I see like really your, your passion for it. And I, it's, it comes across really um, uh, authentically, I guess is the word I think I'm looking for. It, it was scary. I have to say it still is scary. Yeah. It's still very scary, but you know, you just got to keep going. Um, so you mentioned you have two toddlers, toddler boys. Um, and I guess this kind of goes for I, I, maybe any kid that passes through, but I didn't know if you, if you have started to see hints of performer in your boys. And second part of the question is like, what advice would you give to them wanting to pursue the career that you, you've chosen to pursue? Yeah. Uh, We've gone to a few auditions. Hasn't been great. I gotta <laughs> say, has not been great. Um, that's what, like you know what I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing this for them. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing this for me because I want this for them for some reason. So we stopped doing it. You know, but um, you know my oldest son Jacoby, who I <laughs> so lovingly named after me. Um, <laughs> he loves to dance he's totally my artist he's creative he loves to dance um and then my younger son you know is showing more interest in in like baseball but he's everything you know? eh, eh. like baseball. yeah honestly like he'll, he'll do that and he's bored and then he wants to paint his nails and then he's bored and then he wants to you know it's like honestly he just he's like all over the place and i love that you know i i i 100 love that um but you know if if they were to go into this profession mm -hmm. listen i'll i'm behind you 110 percent. you know i support you the one thing i would say is you gotta work for it you gotta work hard you know i mean it literally really is like a very small percentage do people get handed this career on a on a silver platter you it's possible to have it you know, but yeah. you just have to, you have to be in class. You have to take class. You have to create your web series. You have to, you know, find a, 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 a bubble of people that, you know, that you fit in with and that you can grow with and that support each other and hold each other up. You know, um, I would just say also that it, you got to, you got to learn how to take the no's because so many more are going to come than the yeses, yeah. you know? Tough. It's really tough. Even now, I'm so it's it's hard, you know. So, yeah, I would say all those things, and then I would say, but your experience is going to be different than mine. Your journey is going to be different than mine. So everything I say right now <laughs> might not happen to you, you know. But this is what my experience is. This is what I want to, you know. This is what I can tell you. And, um, but yeah, my kids. I'm like, I just want them to do whatever they want to do. I want them to be whatever they want to be. I want them to do whatever they want. We don't 
there's an, I let them go in any direction they want. Even now, I mean, yeah, there's no nothing. There's nothing that's wrong or uh, not allowed in my house. Right that's now. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a long, long version of this question, I guess. Um, so you mentioned you went to the Orange County School of the Arts, mm -hmm. and then you went to Temple uh, University, studied theater, uh, theater arts. Um, so I think that this moment uh, is different for everyone, and creatives are are very different in this. But because I feel like you wanted to be a performer your entire life, it seems. Okay, so what would you, how would you define success? Like you personally, how would you define success as, as the creative artistic person that you have always wanted to be? And then did you have that moment of realization, maybe multiple times, um, that, ah, uh, I've made it, I've done this, I set out to do this and I did it. Yeah. Uh, I've definitely had the feeling of I've set out to do this and I've, and I've done it. I think, I think, you know, those are small goal, though, not small. Those are stepping goals. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I've definitely knocked a lot of those off my, you know, my goal. <laughs> so I can say, you know, yeah, I have felt really good about some of the things that I've accomplished in life, um, in my career. Uh, I think, I think, what was the first part of the question? <laughs> how would you define success? How would you personally define success as like a creative person? Yeah, I love that question. Ask me this 15 years ago mm -hmm. and my answer would be very different yeah. than what it would be right now. Uh, that's just part of growth. But um there's always going to be a part of me that wants more in this business. There's always going to be a part of me that um, that's going to want more. That's going to want a, the the, uh, the uh, uh, another job, a bigger job, um, all of that. So I think that that will always be there. Um, but I think for me, feeling comfortable, uh, happy, right, in what what I'm doing is yeah. very content for me right now listen when the kids are out of school or out of my house maybe I, I might be different you know it might be different i might be like oh my gosh i have to have this right um i do really want this really bad still right but i'm it, and and there are times i'm not comfortable i there's times i'm i'm not i'm not happy with what's happening i'm like get a move on it girl get a move right um but i think my definition of success would be um I would have to say you froze. So I, I, I was like, I want to hear this answer. Here it is. Okay. So my, my definition of being successful is to be fulfilled and to, and to be content. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. And I mean, I would obviously love to like have, um, uh, Hmm, let me think. This is a hard question, Paul. Right? I mean, it's, but I think it's different for everybody. Like, I yeah. think that that's what's so interesting to think. Like, I don't know how I would define success, but it would be probably different for different aspects. Like, I think it all comes back to, it, it all really, for me, just comes back to misguided at the moment. Like, I really wanted to be a soap star. Like, I, that's, that was my driving force forever. And right. then I wanted... Um, it's like you said, there were little steps here and there to like get to the bigger picture. And I think in order to have like that big goal, you have to look at like, well, how do I get from A to B to C? And then I can get to the, the big picture goal. Um, and then it happened. Like I got to misguided. And while it wasn't necessarily the guiding light role that I had, I'm acting alongside Jean Carroll, who I grew up watching as Nadine on guiding light like that's yeah. amazing like that's like yeah. it's like and so I would consider like that ultimately like a success like I would be um I would feel very confident saying I feel successful in what I wanted to do and and now it can grow and now I can sort of morph it into something else or whatever it, whatever it will be but I think thinking 
I think it's hard for an artist to think about success because the goal sort of keeps changing ah, and evolving. And um, so I'm just, I was just curious. I think you're the first person I asked that question to. So I apologize. It's like, for... I gotta say, I was like, oh my God, it kept, you know why? It kept changing in my head. And so I was like, wow, I really need to sit on this and think about this for a minute, like before I just answer this. We are asking the hard questions over <laughs> here. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to call you tomorrow and I'll be like, I have the answer. <laughs> I look forward to it. Uh, <laughs> I did say that I would love to have Gracie, uh, your character in Misguided, come back uh, yeah. at some point. And I think, I think there was a version of last season where Gracie showed up in the restaurant and my character had amnesia. So like it was... Um, oh, yeah. very different. It was a, obviously a very different interaction that we would have had, but it ultimately like didn't play for the bigger story that I was telling, but I would, I would, I think that there's the, there's the Gracie character. And then there was the producer in season one who have this like daytime role that, um, they're part of this daytime world that I want to be a part of. So I think it's important to sort of bring them back and, and then sort of like, connects everything back to season one too. Um, that said, uh, going forward, I'm trying to figure out like different soap opera tropes and staples that like are mainstay soap stories. And I'm curious if you, knowing that you have a soap uh, history watching, um, if you think of any storylines that you're like, oh, this kind of like back from the dead or this evil twin, like we did amnesia or something like those type of tropes that soaps are known for. If you think, oh, misguided would, would benefit from doing this type of story. I don't know. Um, oh man, I'd have to think about it. I, I love the, uh, oh, you're my daddy story. <laughs> um, I love, the amnesia stories are, well, the amnesia stories, they just really drag. Yeah. <laughs> Dixie story. <laughs> I was like, come on. <laughs> they kept missing each other. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, the amnesia story, that's good. Um, I'm trying to think of like what I saw. Do you remember one time I was on the set of General Hospital and, and I was hearing the story play out for the first time and I remember one of the ADs started laughing because I was listening and then all of a sudden, like realistically <laughs> just dropped to the floor. Like I was like, like I couldn't <laughs> believe that this was happening. Like I was like, this is the script. This is crazy. I can't remember what it was. Anyway. Yeah. I, I think, um, I don't know. Have they ever thought of a new one? I feel like they play them out. I know there was a, a soap opera writer um, that basically said there are seven or eight different types of soap storylines. And it's just a matter of the, the characters that you put into it and sort of how they um, tell the story. Because um, each character would tell that story differently. Um, yeah. But, you know, we, it's just one of those things that I love to like brainstorm and think about because Misguided's taken on this new soap role that yeah. it... Um, that it didn't have season one because we switched from comedy to drama. Um, Cause the daytime Emmy said we were too funny. <laughs> it's not really what they said, but they said we were too much of a comedy and not a drama. <laughs> I just took it as we're just so gosh darn funny. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> what? Who, that's like the, the literally I, I'm actually speechless. Cause I'm like, that's every, we want funny. We need funny, especially right now. Oh my gosh. I know. I know. But you know, I was, I feel like I, we took it into the drama last season. We had a little bit of funny, but it wasn't like the main focus of it. Um, and going forward, we'll see how it goes. But, um, but I am excited. I think that the future of the show is going to be what it is. And, and I would love you to be a part of it. Um, yes. I can't wait. Maybe Gracie come or uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I lost my job and I need to get one from you now. That was Cable actually uh, uh, an idea because I was like, well, I wonder if, I mean, I, I know you worked for the bold, your character worked for the bold and the beautiful, which is still on. But I was like, I wonder if we could like have her get fired or something. And then she's like, I don't know, but I don't 
know, we'll find, we'll, we'll figure something yeah. out. It'll be good. Yeah. It'll be good. Um, I think that that's all of the questions that I have um, planned. Okay. I, I, um, I was saying this, that I love you. Uh, when I was writing your, your scene, I had this level of excitement um, knowing that you were going to play it. And I was really looking forward to it. And you like blew me away. It was just, it was just wonderful. And I realized when I was preparing these with all the questions for you today, I had that same level of excitement and you bring out such a joy in me that I just, I just love. And so this has been really wonderful. And I just am, I love you so much. <laughs> Thanks so much. And think, I do feel like we, we, even though we don't talk all the time, like I, I have, I do love you so much. And you have been such a great part of my life. I mean, remember what you used to walk my dog. We used to leave books back and forth to each other. Like you were like such a, such a bright light in my life. And even my husband's like, Oh, Paul, Paul, like he love, you know what I mean? Like you're, I love you too. I thank you. And I feel the same. I mean, you're just, your smile, everything. You're so, I love you. I don't know. I feel like my cheeks, but my cheeks are hurting because I've just been smiling, watching and listening to you this whole time. Just like, Oh, I miss you. And I love you. You just, you just bring that out of me. And I love it. I love it. You too. I can't wait to have you and see you soon. Hopefully. I know it'll be, it'll be soon. Um, well, with that, I'm going to sign off. I will leave everyone your social on the um, screen information uh, for both you and, and J&O Creatives. Um, I'll also put it in the description of the YouTube video. Um, but I think that that's uh, it. And I, and I, again, I love you and I am so appreciative of you taking the time to, to chat with me today. Thank you so much for having me. I know it was so long ago. I thank you for having me. Of course. I of course, any any excuse I can have to talk to people, I'm just like, oh, I know, want to reconnect. <laughs> so this has been lovely. Thank you, thank you again.